I'd be surprised if we get one quarter point rate cut. I didn't think that's even aggressive. We don't really know right now. I mean, the, the Fed keeps their language very vague on purpose. Mm -hmm. They talk about slowing overseas, but they mention that the U.S. economy is very strong. So I think July 31st, we might not see one rate cut, which is very possible here. Why do you think the market is so convinced that we are getting? Because when you look at the Fed fund futures overall, it's basically a 100% chance that we're going to get some yeah. sort of rate cut at the end of this month. Why are the markets so convinced if the data simply isn't that negative? Well, because markets are wrong a lot, <laughs> right? I mean, if you look at traders predicting what Fed moves are going to be, mm -hmm. they don't normally get it right. I mean, they were very, very bullish that the Fed was going to actually uh, increase rates only six months ago. Now they're saying that there's a 100% chance. I'm always skeptical when you say 100%. As we say, definitely, maybe, right? Definitely they're going to do it, but maybe they won't. Mm -hmm. So I think any kind of certainty like that, you always have to be wary about, especially when you're looking at predicting the future in the markets. Right. One thing that uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that stuck out to me was he was talking about the U.S. economy, saying that it's still in a good place despite some of these cross currents. We've heard him talk about cross currents uh, in the past, at least at his last press conference. Do you agree with his statement there? Um, I don't know. I mean, cross currents meaning, you know, what's going on overseas and things like that. I mean, we're pretty insulated from Europe, right? And mm -hmm. if you look at our economy, it's been continuing to be strong. The only person, the only place that's really suffered, in my opinion, has been Europe with this whole trade war that's going on with China. I mean, China slowed down a little bit, but their GDP came in better than expected last quarter. Mm -hmm. So I think overall, I kind of disagree with that. I think we have a very insulated economy. Well, speaking of Europe, the European Commission lowering its estimates for the Eurozone and inflation, basically saying that there is all this uncertainty out there when it comes to U.S. trade policy. That could hurt uh, the Eurozone's growth, at least. Is there any reason to believe that this could spill over and hurt the U.S. economy at some point soon? Yeah, I don't think so, again, because I think we are relatively insulated from what happens in Europe, and we've mm -hmm. seen that so far all year. I mean, look, we just came up with amazing job numbers on Friday. Um, you know, we'll see where GDP comes in for this quarter. Um, but I also think that, you know, you look at the stock market, you look at um, just the anticipation of earnings being really light this quarter. There's just so much negativity out there already. I think surprises are in the positive here, Shauna. You talk about uh, earnings being light this quarter. What exactly are you expecting? Any sectors, I guess, to buck the downward trend and outperform? Well, analysts are saying 0% growth this quarter. So I think across, you know, all industries here, you could see some surprises in the positive. I mean, they, they basically underguessed on last quarter's estimates. I think it's going to happen again. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to see surprises in the positive again, and bam, you get another catalyst for the market. What's the best way to play the markets in this type of environment right now? We don't know what the Fed's going to do at the end of the month. You talk about earnings season, the fact that it's likely to be weak here. What's the best way to go about this? I think you have to look at being diversified here. I want to be discriminant in the sense that, you know, growth's been really, really hot. But, you know, we talk about interest rates. I mean, it's 2% now you're getting on a 10-year Treasury, which is just ridiculous. And you have about $8 trillion sitting in cash right now. You know, if you look at the dividend payers, like the banks right now, they're going to give like $190 billion back to share shareholders between stock buybacks, dividends uh, as well. So, I mean, when I look at that, it's like the stock market is so cash flow rich right now. If you look at things that are dividend paying and you look at the foreign markets who are beaten down because sentiment's so negative, it's kind of like you got to be a kid in a candy store buying right now. It's like, you know, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. All right. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> Ryan, thanks so much <laughs> thanks, for joining Shana. me today.